We're so grateful you're joining us here at Church Unleashed, where we are on a mission. We are one church with two locations, helping people unleash their full redemptive potential in Jesus. If you have any questions or like to learn more about us, simply head over to our website at mychurchunleashed.tv. Your growth is important to us, so stay connected throughout the week by downloading our My Church Unleashed app. It's something we created just for you. Our app is available wherever you download your apps from. Remember, you matter to God and us. Enjoy this week's teaching. Hey, today we want to spend some time talking about the principle of integrity. Can you just say integrity out loud? Integrity. Or you can call this walking with integrity. Do you know this? Integrity is a vital part of our lives. How many believe that? That we have integrity or we can lose integrity, but all of us have a certain amount of it. Here's what I've discovered. Integrity will give you long-term success. See, you can live lying, cheating, stealing, backbiting, all that stuff, short-term success. But if you, like I, want long-term success in life, you've got to work on your integrity. Integrity matters. The challenge is too many people want short-term. So they compromise their character to get what they want today. Instead of being faithful and allowing God to bring you fruit, too many people often want the fruit without the faithfulness. Did you hear that? And that's what often leads to compromise. But I've learned that people with integrity have longevity. That somehow everybody around them sees that is a person of character. That's somebody I want to be like. That's somebody I want to get close to. See, people of integrity have their conscience clear. And when they make a mistake, they confess it to God and they move on. Proverbs 10, 9 says this, people with integrity walk safely. See, when you have integrity, you don't have to worry about where you plant your foot next. You know God's going to hold you up and secure you. But listen to that next line. But the those who follow crooked paths will slip and fall. Notice in this passage, you're following a path. It's somewhere on that path that you slip and fall. See, there's some that think, man, I'm living this life, I'm being a person of integrity, and then all of a sudden there's another option. And you see this a lot, where people are doing well for a little bit, but then all of a sudden there's a moment where they can compromise to get where they want to be. You see, when you have integrity, you are protected by God, though. Without integrity, you step outside of God's protection. Every step you take when you are in the hand of God with integrity is protected by him. When you're dependable, when you can be counted on, when you are honest, when your life is consistent. Comac, hear this today. When you are living a consistent life, you are protected by God. You can walk safely. Hicksville, when you are living the life God has called you to live, you can walk safely. Every step of your life is protected by God. You see, your reputation is who people think you are. And a lot of people think they know who we are, don't they? But your integrity is who you really are. How many like a good reputation? We all do, right? But sometimes we so much want the good reputation that we do things that compromise our integrity to give us a better reputation. The truth is, our integrity is the bedrock of our reputation. Without our integrity, our reputation will never, ever be right. Your reputation is who people think you are. Your integrity is who you actually are. Hicksville, who are you today? Comac, who are you today? Because reputation is seen from a distance. Integrity is seen up close. The only way you will able, ever be able to judge someone's integrity is get close to them. Because the closer you get to them, the more you see of them. Now, I learned this a long time ago. Never work for your heroes. Your heroes will always let you down. 
Because the closer you get to somebody, the quicker you start to realize they are just like me. They make mistakes. They don't do everything right. They're not perfect. So I refuse to work for my heroes. So it's interesting enough, you know, it's like everybody think, man, it'd be great to work for the pastor. I'm also a boss, which means there's things that got to get done. There's times you have to correct the staff and direct the staff. And then there's times where any of our staff will tell you, whether it's Hicks or Coleman, you know what they'll tell you? Man, yeah, Todd makes mistakes. But you know what they'll also tell you about me? Guaranteed. But he's quick to admit it. That's still integrity. A lot of people think integrity is perfection. That is a myth. There is nobody perfect but Jesus Christ. But I can still live with my imperfections and be a person of integrity. See, we've got to learn to be people of integrity. You never know someone's integrity until you get up close. And the closer you get, the more imperfections that you see. Come on, Mary, do you know this is true? It looks good at the honeymoon. I'm just not going to say anything else because Mary's watching online. I love you, baby. <laughs> Proverbs 21, 21 says this. Whoever pursues righteousness or integrity and unfailing love will find life, righteousness, and honor. You got to get this today, and this is huge. This verse does not say whoever is righteous. It's whoever pursues it. Let me ask you, are you pursuing integrity today? Are you pursuing a Christ-honoring life? When you are in pursuit, how many grew up watching the Dukes of Hazards? Yo, know, Roscoe P. Coltrane. I'm in hot, 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 hot pursuit. Let me ask you, are you in hot pursuit of integrity today? Are you committed that no matter where life takes you, no matter what opportunities you have in front of you, you are going to live with integrity? Whoever pursues it, not whoever is it, but just pursuing it. And you get three blessings when you're pursuing integrity. Life. How many want to live a Christ-honoring life? I do. You get life. You get righteousness. Now, here's the great thing about righteousness. You pursue it, but you can't make yourself righteous. Christ made us righteous through the sacrifice of himself on the cross. And then scripture declares, you are the righteousness of God in and through the person of Christ Jesus. All you got to do is pursue it. And as you're pursuing it, you become it. Well, that's deep. So deep, I don't know if anybody got that. When you pursue it, you become it. And so as you're pursuing righteousness and integrity before long, you will be that person of integrity, but you also get honor. People love to honor people of integrity. But sadly in our culture today, it is very hard to find people of integrity. Have you tried politics lately? I don't know if anybody really says what they actually think or if they just say what they want to get elected. I don't know about education. Go down every list of everything. All the things that you're saying. And the church is not exempt from that. The church has challenges too. But think about this. If we as people today are not people of integrity, what will our next generation be like? What one generation allows, the next generation enjoys. So if we want our children and our grandchildren to be people that live the right life that they're supposed to live, that they're people of integrity, what does that mean for you and I? We've got to live the right life. We've got to set the stage for them. See, as I said before, some people think that integrity means being perfect, but that is not integrity. Because if that was the definition of integrity, that would mean no one could ever be a person of integrity. Here's my definition of integrity. Pursuing the right things at the right time in the right way as many times as you can. Doing the right things at the right time in the right way as often as you can. I remember 19, what year was it? 95. I just graduated from seminary. 
Nobody wanted to hire a single youth pastor. They thought I might distract the young ladies. Here was my response. Have you seen this? Why are you laughing? No, Hicksville's not laughing. They love me. But think about this. I couldn't get a job. So, you know what? I was working at a golf course. I was cutting grass in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I went to my second job, which was a little bit more lucrative. I was part of an insurance company. I'll tell you what it was. Sad to admit, I was just simply a lowly telemarketer. I would make those cold calls. How many hate those people? I was one of those people. I got a phone. Hi, my name's Todd, and I'm calling from such and such insurance company. I've got to sell you something great. And you know what? I was trying to pitch people the hardest insurance to sell, long-term care insurance. Man, I got good. I got real good. Leading insurance guy says, hey, I want him on my team doing my calls. So guess what I started doing? I started doing his calls. And then, this was really cool. This is where it got lucrative. He started giving me bonuses. The only problem was, I was not a licensed insurance agent. It was illegal to get a bonus as a non-licensed agent. I got called in to the uh, branch manager's office. I go into the office, and man, I'll tell you what, I turned whiter than I already am. And I literally was like, man, I had no idea. I didn't know. I said, I'm so sorry. I was very apologetic. I said, it'll never, ever happen again. They brought in the agent. He said the same thing. We left. I was like, whew, okay, I still got my job. Leave, right? Off premises, that insurance agent calls me and says, Todd, guess what? Why don't we do what we've been doing on our own? In other words, I'm going to give you bonuses. You know it's not right, but I'm going to do it anyway. Without hesitation, here's what I did. I said, I'm not interested. He was like, what do you mean you're not interested? I get, what you doing under table? No one's going to know. I said, God will always know. Walked away from that. You know, the next thing I did, I walked right into the branch manager's office. I said, I want, you to t I want to tell you what just happened to me. That man's no longer in his job today. Now, I didn't do that to get rid of him. I did that to protect my integrity. See, your integrity is in your control. If you give up your integrity, you've given up a lot more than just a job, more money, a relationship, a greater reputation. You've given up the core of who you are. Protect your integrity. If you want the blessed life, if you want to live a life under the blessings of God, then you know what? You've got to be a person who pursues righteousness, integrity. It's not just what you do when no one's looking. It's what you do when everyone is watching you too. Say it, come on, nice and loud. Integrity. Oh, even louder. Integrity. Here's our opening thought today. First is this. Make sure your public life and your private life align. Make sure your public and private life are in alignment. The problem with today is most people live double lives. They have one life at work, one life at home, one life at church, one life. I'm telling I can't do that. That's way too confusing. I can't remember all that information. I'm sitting here thinking, I just want to be who I am. Love me or hate me. What you see is what you get. I, yes, wear my skinny ripped jeans. I love t-shirts. I love heavy metal music. I will get in your face if I need to, and I'll let you know if there's something you're doing wrong that needs to be corrected. But I'm also a person that's willing to take it. It's willing to have somebody else get in my grill and tell me, hey, Todd, you're stepping out of bounds. Recorrect. Retrain. Get back on the right path. See, people of integrity aren't those who just, they're also willing to receive it too. Got to be able to receive correction. There's people that are one way here or one way there. We should be the same no matter where we are or who we are with. Come on, can I get some kind of old-fashioned witness on that? So let me give you an example. 
If you won't tell that joke at church, please don't tell it in the lunchroom at work. No amens. It's great. Feeling all alone here right now. It's true, right? I, there was this old expression, some of you might remember it, WWJD. People had the bracelets, the hats, the t-shirts, terrible branding, but a great concept. What would Jesus do? I wonder if we thought about that yet again. How about even this? What would you do if Jesus was right next to you? Maybe better yet, what wouldn't you do if he was right next to you? Some of the language we use, some of the things that we see, some of the, the thoughts that we, come on, here it is, church. We ought to be the same. Should be nothing like that. We should be in public who we are in private. It's got to line up. Scripture talks about a man named Job. Job was considered in Scripture a man of complete integrity. When he had everything, very wealthy man, he had integrity. When he lost everything, he still had complete integrity. His personal life and his one book of the Bible life completely aligned. I mean, think about that. Someone, If someone was writing a book about your life, would they be able to say like Job, person of complete integrity? All of us has to, has to strive to increase our integrity level to pursue righteousness, as the scripture says, to be one thing in public and the same thing in private. You may have heard of a man named Henry Hines, born in 1844 to German immigrants in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He helped support his family as a teenager by growing and selling vegetables in the family garden. After graduating from college and before getting, and getting married, he started a business selling horseradish. In 1875, a national financial collapse drove the young man's company into bankruptcy. Despite the legal freedom bankruptcy gave him, Hen Hines regarded each of his company's outstanding debts as a moral obligation and personally paid back every single penny. What did he go on to do in life? Not much. He founded the H.J. Hines Company with its 57 varieties and has become and became a leading American businessman. What you don't know about Henry Hines, most people might not, is he was a devout Christian. He paid back hundreds of thousands of dollars he technically and legally did not owe. What were the first line what was the first line of his will I desire to set forth at the very beginning of this will as the most important item in it a confession of my faith in Jesus Christ as my savior wow why did he personally pay back everything because he knew that integrity mattered and God honored his integrity. And he went on to find the Heinz coming. You know, if you tap the 57, you know, the ketchup's supposed to come out. None of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are a lot smarter. You put the knife in, wiggle it around. I prefer to tap. And if it ain't coming out, I'm going to tap until it does. Who does that with me? Come on, somebody. three people. Thank you. All right, 7, 10, 12. Integrity. Integrity caused him to create this incredible company. But how many of us, if we did not have the legal obligation to pay back debt, we would not? Why was he successful? Because he maintained his integrity. We as Christians must walk with a higher integrity than the world. We should be people of our word. We ought to be honest. We should give our best in every situation. We ought to work, serve at work with complete excellence. We ought to be quick to admit 
our failures to see our public life and private lives need to align. It is too difficult to manage two people. I personally have a hard enough time, which is one Todd. I don't need two Todds. Church, even when no one's looking, walk with integrity. Here's some simple advice. Don't get stuck in the I have to have it trap. See, I've learned that when you have to have something, anything, that's most likely when your integrity is going to be breached. When you have, I got to have this. I have to purchase that car. So you know what? I'll just up my personal income just a little bit so I get approved for that loan. I'm really stepping. I need some hip waders today. But I know people do that. That is not integrity. That is sin. It is dishonesty. God cannot bless dishonesty. And yet so often we do that. I have to get that new job, so, so I misrepresent myself on that resume. It's okay. It's just a little white lie until that employer checks you out and you get fired because of that indiscretion moment. And then guess what? The next time you're called and you use that reference, guess what just was breached? Your integrity. I have to have that car. I have to have that house. I have to have that girl. The dating website? You ever seen those commercials? Come on, church. Good looking hunk in the picture when you're looking online. And then when you get there to meet that person. I work out 12 days a week. There's only seven days in the week. Integrity. See, I have to have something. I believe is the first step toward crumbling our integrity. Refuse to get off in that trap. It is a very deep pit. It's a man in the Bible. His name was Achan. He wanted something so bad, he directly disobeyed a command of God. In the story, the Israelites had just conquered Jericho. And God told him this. He gave him this command. Burn everything in the city and place the silver, the gold, bronze, and iron in the temple treasury. The things that were to be given to the temple were considered the devoted things. They were to be used solely for God's purposes. Achan decides he's going to take some of the silver, some of the gold, some of the bronze, and some of the iron, and he's going to bury it underneath his tent. He hides it. He takes the silver and buries it the deepest. Here's what Achan said in his own words. I wanted them so much that I took them. Do not fall into the trap of I have to have it. Notice his integrity was compromised when his desire for something was greater than his desire for God's commands. How often, church, do we directly disobey the commands of God because even we want to please people? I mean, think about this. God says this is wrong. Oh, I don't want to upset my friend, though, so I'm not going to say anything. And yet, we fall, I have to have that friendship. I have to have that person. I do not fall into the trap of I have to have it. It is the first step toward a crumbling integrity. The Apostle Paul said it best. I have learned to be content with whatever I have. What a big difference between Achan and Paul, right? Achan had to have something he should not have had. Paul said, no matter what I got, it's what I got, and I'm happy with what I have. No matter what your I have to have it is, unless you and I learn to be content. It will always lead to a fractured integrity. Protect your integrity because it's what leads the foundation of your life. And that's why you have to get this. And here you may or may not think about this when it comes to integrity, but be okay with being you. Any screw-ups in the house? Any I make a heck of a lot of mistakers in the house? Come on, Hicksville. Comac, come on. Anybody 
ever lied before? Cheating? Come on, was a little misleading? Okay, how about this one? You went 56 in a 55. I was going 65 on my way to church today. So was everybody else. So if we end up saying that being a person of integrity is complete perfection, we've all just admitted we've all blown it. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with saying I'm not perfect, but I'm willing to admit my mistakes and then move on. See, people of integrity, when they blow it, they make a mistake, they walk away from that mistake, they don't live in that mistake. Friend, it's more than just being perfect. It is pursuing perfection. See, one of the greatest keys to living a life of integrity is just being you. You see, when you're okay with you, you won't try and be another you, which actually leads to poor integrity because you're not being who God made you to be because you're trying to be another you than other the you than you were created to be the you. That you. But when you are content working on you, bettering you, being you, then you won't want what others have, won't do what others do, and won't be who others are. You will just be you. You see this in dating, don't you? I mean, everybody on that first day, you put on every front. You may not wear deodorant seven days a week, but if you are on a date, you are going to double deodorize. You're going to make sure you smell all good. You're going to go out there and you're going to put your best on, right? Okay, all right. Okay, somebody's going to, okay, I did. But then you quickly learn, right? That I don't necessarily, and that's not really who I am. For me, I would love, I would love, man, I don't know. Would you ever let me preach in shorts and a tank top? Because that is really, I, that's what I wear, shorts and a tank top. So you know what? Next Sunday. Good luck. I'm at Hicksville next week. Aren't you glad I didn't say I wear a Speedo? That'd be embarrassing. Hey, can you look at somebody right now and just say, be you? Come on, be you. Be you at CU. Not B-O at C-U. See, if you're constantly looking at others, you will never be satisfied and never feel like you're living the blessed life. But when you're okay with just being you, you will feel like you are so blessed. See, I don't want what others have. I don't want to be who others are because I don't know what price they had to pay to get where they are. I want to make sure that what I have today is because I'm a person of integrity, that I'm pursuing righteousness. And if I can be a person of integrity with this, then maybe God will give me something better or different in the future because it's built on the foundation of my integrity. It's crazy. Most of you probably know we, we were selling our house and moving into a new house, and we're very thankful we're still getting settled in. But we... Sold our house on Tuesday, bought a new house on Friday morning, moved in Friday night. We are so blessed, right? Such a blessing. My back is killing me. I mean, my arms, I don't know. They're weak anyway. But here's what the great conversation I had with my old neighbor. I was talking to my neighbor at the end of our, uh, we're finishing loading the truck. And as we load the truck, I went over. It was all done. We just had a few things. I'm talking to my neighbor. And um, interesting conversation. It was a good conversation. And talking with him. And, and he said to me, he said, Todd, man, I, I don't know. We're going to miss you over on the block. Because I knew everybody on the block because I like to talk. Um, so, so I'm talking to Carlton. And he says, we knew what we got with you. He's never even come to our church. What he's seen is my home life. He's seen that I keep my grass cut well. 
that the shrubs are manicured, that the windows are clean, that the driveway is free from debris, that when the garbage bag splits and garbage spills all over, I do not blame it on the garbage man. I get out there and I clean it up myself. That he's never heard curse words come out of our house. That he's never heard us screaming at the top of our lungs at each other. Those are the things that people never tell you that they see, but they see. He said this to me. This was his last statement to me as we hugged and said this. He goes, you know what? Maybe you're going to go from being my neighbor to being my pastor. So who knows? I hope Carlton's not here today because that would be embarrassing. But who knows when Carlton's going to show up with his wife and his kids. It's crazy, right? Integrity. It matters. People are watching. And when you're just you, yeah, that was the time. He wasn't the neighbor. But you remember the story when I was outside washing my car with just my shorts on? Anybody remember the story? And I'm out there washing my car. I like to take my wash off the car. And the guy across the street, he goes, hey, you look hot. I was like, yeah, it's really hot outside. He goes, no, you look hot. And I'm like, yeah, it looks really hot. It's hot outside. God, help me, please. I didn't go talk to that neighbor when I left. Just, okay. <laughs> Just being me. Just being me, guys. See, if you're being the best version of you, if you're living with integrity, if you're loving people, helping the hurting, lifting the discouraged, then you're blessed. You don't need any more. Just be you. I can easily get locked into the cage of being who I am not. All of us can. But integrity is being who you are publicly and privately, not perfectly. Now, I'm not saying that you can run around your house in your underwear. And because you're a person of integrity, you got to be who you are at home and at church. Please do not come to church in your underwear and run around because you do that at home. That is not what we're talking about. But it's on the inside of your heart and your life. Just be you. I love this passage. Listen to this. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It is I who created them. Hear this today if you hear nothing else. You were created for God's glory. Every talent, every ability, every gift, every muscle, your brain, your body, your family was created for God's glory. What a responsibility that my life brings glory to God. Church, I want it to be the greatest glory I could ever bring to God through my life. And that means I've got to pursue integrity. I've got to pursue righteousness. Be the best version of you. Come on, somebody, just say it one more time. Be you. And then last, finally, live with an undivided heart. See, I think integrity is often attacked because our hearts are divided. We have the desire, i got to do what's right. I'm going to mess up the camera perch right now. And the desire to do what's wrong. And i got to wage between the two. I don't know. I'm living a little divided. But isn't it true it is a daily wrestling match between right and wrong? How many of you have good days? I'm doing a lot right today. I'm doing good. And then you have bad days. You make mistakes. All of us have this issue that we struggle with. It is a wrestling match. David. The man after God's own heart prayed this prayer. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. <sighs> Give me an undivided heart. Church, that's my prayer for us. That we have an undivided heart. That our heart would be focused on pleasing the heart of the Father. And as we make him happy, we'll make ourselves happy. 
And that's why I think we need to master what I call the art of pre-decisions. I love this concept. It's so simple. I talked about it a lot in my life, but I believe it could save a lot of people from losing their integrity. What is a pre-decision? It is a decision you make before you have to make the decision. Before you're put in a situation. In other words, you are deciding now for a situation you may be in tomorrow. Does that make sense? For example, someone at work wants you to lie to cover them. The pre-decision that honors God is, I can't lie. It's a sin that breaks my integrity. So it becomes an immediate decision. Sorry, I can't do that for you. The wrong decision or the wrong statement to make is, let me think about it. Because now that person says, they're not as much of a person of integrity as I thought they were. But when you immediately say, I'm sorry, I can't do that for you, that's dishonest. They may get upset at you. They may not be happy at you. But the truth is, who would you rather make happy, people or God? I'll choose God every single time. I want to make him happy. See, pre-decisions will protect you from pressure. The pressure to make decisions in emotional situations. The pressure to conform or compromise. You already made the decision, so you don't have to struggle with the pressure of making it again. Let me ask you, what pre-decisions do you need to make today? What situations are you thinking, man, I may come up against this. What pre-decisions should you make in your life? What list do you need to create for when, not if, you are placed in a position that will damage your character? Start making some pre-decisions. Ruben Gonzalez, he grew up on the streets of Spanish Harlem. But he also became a world-renowned racquetball player. In his first ever professional tournament, Gonzalez reached the final. He held match point in the fifth and final game. And he made a terrific kill shot into the front corner to win the tournament. The ball was called good, and all were ready to congratulate the new champion when Gonzalez turned around and said that shot was out of bounds. He lost his serve, and his opponent went on to win the match and the tournament. The next issue of the National Racquetball Magazine, which I never even heard of before this story, featured Gonzalez on its cover. Everyone wanted to know why Gonzalez did it. Why would a professional sportsman disqualify himself after he was already declared the winner at match point. He had a one-sentence statement. It was the only thing I could do to maintain my integrity. What a powerful statement. And if a person playing the game of racquetball can have that kind of integrity, what kind of integrity ought to be in God's house? What kind of integrity ought we live with? Our yes should be our yes. Our no should be our no. We should be the same thing in public as we are in private. Integrity, it takes years to build, but only moments to destroy. Church, let me ask you today, how's your integrity? How is your integrity? Are you pursuing righteousness? Would you close your eyes as we pray this morning?